The head of the European Space Agency has urged the continent's leaders to stop facilitating Elon Musk's ambition to dominate the new space economy. Why is this? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. By the way, if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell to make sure you never miss any updates from us. Now let's get back to today's content. Joseph Oshbacher, the new Director General of ESA, said that Europe's readiness to help the rapid expansion of Musk's Starlink satellite internet service risked hindering the region's own companies from realizing the potential of commercial space. He said in an interview with the Financial Times that space will be much more restrictive in terms of frequencies and orbital slots. The governments of Europe collectively should have an interest to give European providers equal opportunities to play on a fair market. Germany has recently applied to the International Telecommunications Union, which coordinates the use of wireless frequencies for carrying data to grant Starlink Spectrum for about 40,000 satellites. Previously, Musk also won approval for more than 30,000 satellites through U.S. regulators. Earlier this year, he said that his private rocket company SpaceX was prepared to spend up to $30 billion to expand Starlink. And I gotta tell you, $30 billion is not a drop in the ocean. Oshbacher said Musk's Starlink was already so big that it was difficult for regulators or rivals to catch up. You have one person owning half of the active satellites in the world. And that's quite amazing. De facto, he is making the rules. The rest of the world, including Europe, is just not responding quick enough. Thus, it can be seen that the potential of commercial space was quickly tapped by falling launch costs and cheaper, smaller satellites. Starlink and the UK government-backed OneWeb are leading a rush to create mega constellations of hundreds and even thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit to provide broadband to places hard to reach by cable. The Chinese government and Amazon's Project Kuiper both plan to launch their own LEO constellations. A new generation of space companies driven by falling launch costs and cheaper satellites is also aiming to deliver commercial services from LEO such as Earth Observation. That has also fueled concern over the absence of a global space traffic management system for low Earth orbit. This region is up to 2,000 kilometers above the Earth where most new commercial services are targeted. Last year, the Satellite Industry Association estimated there could be more than 100,000 commercial spacecraft in orbit by 2029. Oshbacher's concerns were echoed by Franz Feyo. Luxembourg's economy minister, who said new rules were needed to ensure the safe use of space. You have people like Elon Musk just launching constellations and satellites and throwing Teslas up into orbit. We need to set common rules. Colonization or just doing things in a completely deregulated space is a concern, he said on the sidelines of the new space conference in Luxembourg. Europe's satellite sector is dominated by traditional operators who rely on a much smaller number of expensive high-orbit satellites to provide services such as television transmission. Although the ITU coordinates radio frequencies, there is no overarching international authority or regulator controlling the launch of satellites. One fear is that as orbits become overcrowded, there is a growing risk of collisions, which could generate catastrophic quantities of debris. Space junk is already a significant hazard. Steve Collar, chief executive of satellite operator SES, said the industry was heading for a situation where there will be far too many satellites deployed. A lot of these plans are in direct response to the fact that nobody is properly regulating. Musk in particular has come under fire from astronomers and rivals for the pace of his expansion. Earlier this year, his SpaceX rocket company was launching more than 100 satellites every month, with close to 2,000 currently in low Earth orbit. Astronomers worry that huge numbers of satellites will interfere with ground-based telescopes and could impact the appearance of the night sky for stargazers worldwide, according to a report by the American Astronomical Society. Ralph Dinsley, the founder of NORSS, which tracks objects in space, said that at the speed Musk is launching his own satellites into orbit, he is almost owning the most desirable orbital planes because no one can get in there. He is creating Musk sovereignty in space. 
for Europe to compete more effectively with SpaceX, French Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire recently announced a plan of developing a reusable rocket on a more rapid timeline. He said, for the first time, Europe will have access to a reusable launcher. In other words, we will have our SpaceX, we will have our Falcon 9. We will make up for a bad strategic choice made 10 years ago. The new plan calls for the large France-based rocket firm Ariane Group to develop a new small lift rocket called Maya by the year 2026. This is four years ahead of a timeline previously set by the European Space Agency for the development of a significantly larger reusable rocket. Although the technical details are sparse, Maya will not be Europe's Falcon 9. It will have a lift capacity of up to one metric ton to low Earth orbit and be powered by a reusable Prometheus rocket engine, which is fueled by methane and liquid oxygen. This engine, which remains in the preliminary stages of development, has a thrust comparable to a single Merlin 1D rocket engine, which powers SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. But since there are nine engines on the SpaceX rocket, it can lift more than 15 times as much as the proposed Maya in fully reusable mode. At the same time, France is also interested in developing a native new space launch industry. French aerospace reporter Vincent Lamichon said the country plans to soon call for projects on reusable micro-launchers, smaller than the Maya project. Nascent startups, French Venture Orbital Systems and Strato Space Systems are expected to compete with the French Space Agency, providing technical support to the winners and launch contracts. It's a real break from French strategy and clearly inspired by the USA. The new plan from the French, therefore, involves working with Germany, France, and Italy on the development of the Ariane 6 rocket, which will perform medium and heavy lift launches for the continent, including European science satellites and other government payloads and competing globally for commercial geostationary satellite launches. But is this enough to compete with SpaceX? I don't think so. By 2026, SpaceX will probably launch Starships for less than Maya's price. SpaceX has more than a full decade head start on Europe in developing a reusable rocket. The first Falcon 9 rocket landed six years ago, and SpaceX's focus is not on maximizing jobs. It's on minimizing the need for them in its ruthless pursuit of lower launch costs. To put it frankly, Europe has a long way to go before catching up with SpaceX, let alone surpassing it. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And here's a reminder to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's content, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell to stay up to date on future episodes of Great SpaceX. Also, let us know what your thoughts are on today's content in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.